describe how this model got created because it feels spot on as a practitioner. Yeah, thanks. Well, we had the great good fortune to be invited by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to work on this model for them. You know, they do tremendous investments around the globe. Um, this particular area was their family health innovation portfolio. And they were concerned that they're, they weren't getting enough bang for their buck that they just um, weren't investing in projects that actually would be implemented and scale up to be successful. And so they asked us to look at the literature, find out what others had been doing, you know, recognize what models had been developed so far, but then build on them to make it a practical sort of a model that practitioners in the field could take up. And mm -hmm. so we, uh, again, built this great team and then set about understanding uh, broadly as a foundation theoretical literature from a whole bunch of disciplines. So we were reading literature from economics and organizational mm -hmm. theory and sociology and business um, to get a broad sense of how innovations, new ideas mm -hmm. flow. Um, that was sort of a, a grounding for us. We identified a gap in the literature was that, which was that these models were very theoretical. Mm -hmm. You couldn't really grab onto pieces of them in a concrete way. Mm -hmm. So we then, um, as Christina mentioned earlier, I think one of the strengths of our approach was that we drew from both empirical literature and um, from the field, experience from the field. So the first step was to do interviews with experts from around the world. So we talked to, for example, a family doctor in Uganda who works on neonatal health. Mm -hmm. We talked to a government official from Brazil who really led the field there in spreading exclusive breastfeeding as a behavior in that environment. Um, we talked with a researcher in Pakistan who'd been studying community health workers there for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, so people with very rich experience. Uh, that was the first step. Then we turned to the empirical literature, um, these two million articles <laughs> that we keep talking about, um, to see what had been studied and what we could learn in four in types of family health innovations. Uh, and so that was a systematic literature review. And then we turned back out to the field. This last step was a, we call it pressure testing, but it really just means inviting critical feedback from experts. And mm -hmm. so we heard from 100 experts from around the world, kind of an intimidating process, but so valuable because they really helped us um, refine ideas, concepts in the model that um, needed clarifying. Just a couple of examples, this idea of user group that Christina has mentioned. Mm -hmm. We had to be very precise what we meant by that. This notion of receptivity, we haven't really talked about that yet here, mm -hmm. but what does it mean for a community or a user group to be receptive to something? not need or demand, but openness to innovation. So that last step of pressure testing was really critical to refining the model, really getting the wisdom from people from around the world. So that was the process. Fantastic, yeah. thank you so much. So maybe we should dive deeper into this model, AIDED. Um, tell us more about each component. So we, we start with assess, and again, uh, to emphasize the nonlinearity. You do always want to do an assessment, and people do that. Um, but this is a process that can often be ongoing as you introduce the innovation. Mm -hmm. Um, but actually, first let me take a step back because we also want to be clear that we are thinking about two discrete entities, thinking about the user group, as Leslie mentioned, and also thinking about the innovation itself. And paying attention to both of those things, the environment around the user group, and then thinking very carefully about how they would come together. Mm -hmm. So in the assess step, we would understand really the user group and the environment around it. So let me come back to the door to balloon example that I mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, um, which again was an effort to reduce the time when a patient with a certain kind of heart attack from the time that person gets to the door of the hospital until they get a treatment that um, puts a balloon in the artery to less than 90 minutes. So door to balloon time less than 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, to understand how to implement some evidence-based practices to do that, we, the groups that um, were involved in the door to balloon time really assessed the hospitals. How were people already dealing with those patients? How were they brought to the hospital? How was communication happening? And what was the regulatory environment around those hospitals mm -hmm. that was influencing the way that people were conducting the patient care? And then also thinking about the practices themselves. So it's the um, steps of dealing with that patient from the time they realize that patient has a certain kind of heart attack until the time that patient gets the treatment. How do we look at that step, the series of steps, and get it to less than 90 minutes? So that segues into, that's all assess. That's the A. And that segues into I, which is innovate. 
So that's the next step. I'll mm -hmm. just go on. And um, that, as I mentioned before, is really focusing on the innovation itself. So there were uh, there was a set of steps that needed to happen for the patient to get a uh, balloon within 90 minutes. And how can that be tailored to the user group? So people really thought carefully about, can we have any wiggle room and ad adaptability in these steps? How do we have the nurses speak to the doctors? How do we have the emergency response um, personnel speak to the people in the mm -hmm. hospital? And there were some areas in those steps where there could be adaptability to make it fit to the hospital where it was being implemented. So those are a couple of examples of the A and the I of aided. Great, mm -hmm. Leslie. So I go to D, I guess, uh, develop. Um, develop is, I think, uh, you know, an interesting step in both examples. We'll go to the community health workers um, to sort of illustrate this idea. But as Christina described just briefly, um, the develop component of aided requires us to really think very carefully about the context. You know, context matters. The political environment, the economic environment, the organizational structural environment. Um, and so paying attention in this stage to these environments can help us cultivate an uh, a space in which an innovation can take root. Um, th we need to be thinking about you know, who stands to lose, what are the turf battles. Um, right. What are the various kinds of incentives or motivations in this particular environment? Um, how do we use data, not just scientific evidence, but all kinds of data to help create a space in which an innovation can, can grab? Um, so in this community health example, there was a group in Nepal um, who were interested in having the community health workers expand the role of practice. I mentioned some of the kinds of things community health workers do typically. And in Nepal, they had been doing um, distribution of vitamin A very successfully for some period of time. And this multidisciplinary group wanted to have the community health workers do more, um, in particular, do case detection and treatment of pneumonia. And the government officials didn't really have faith that these lay health workers would be able to do case detection and treatment very successfully. Um, lay health workers typically low literacy, living in very rural areas, often unpaid. Um, and so the, uh, the group that was advocating for this kind of growth and scope did a pilot study in a couple of um, districts and showed that in fact these community health workers were perfectly capable, mm -hmm. having been trained to do case detection and treatment. Um, of pneumonia. And so that, the, that pilot program really gained the credibility of the government officials and so they made a government decision to spread that program to 42 districts across mm. the country. Mm. So just an example of sort of taking the environment and seeing what needed to be done and, and uh, kind of changing it in a way to mm. be more welcoming of the innovation. Right. Excellent. Terrific. So then I'll pick up the E, the um, engage step. And this is really, uh, as I mentioned before, really the kind of when the um, rubber hits the road, I guess you say, where the innovation mm -hmm. comes together with the user group. And so, as I mentioned before, this is thinking about boundaries, thinking about how things come in, thinking about making the um, innovation accessible to the people who will be using it, and then ultimately getting to a place where it's integrated into the norms and practices of the user mm -hmm. group. So the uh, door to balloon example, it, it started, the innovation was um, actually, again, evidence-based. There had been studies of how to reduce uh, door to balloon time, mm -hmm. and then that was developed into a set of practices and a toolkit, um, which was adapted to fit the hospitals. But how was it brought in? And so we think about this idea of a boundary spanner, an individual who can bring something into an organization, is welcome there, somebody already brings something in. Mm -hmm. And that uh, could have been a quality improvement officer, sometimes it was a cardiologist, mm -hmm. sometimes it was um, a person who had familiarity with the literature, but someone who already brought something new in. So that's um, fit and then introducing the innovation to the user group across a boundary. Mm -hmm. And then the next uh, component of Engage is to uh, translate the material or the messaging or the language of the innovation so that it is accessible to the people who will actually be using it. So again, with Door to Balloon, it was taking that academic language and making it something that the people who were actually going to be implementing those steps and really counting the minutes found accessible and felt that they could mm -hmm. do. And uh, this is also a component of engagement writ large, is to make sure that the innovation is understandable and usable to the people mm -hmm. who are actually going to be using it. 
And then the final component of the engage step is to integrate. So that's actually when the innovation is not really new anymore. This is sort of becomes part of what we do around here. Mm -hmm. That's when you transition from door to balloon time of 120 minutes to 90 or less. And that's the last piece of engage. When you see that happen, the innovation has fully engaged with the user group. It has now become part of the DNA of the organization. And it's a normal part of the way that people do things. Excellent. Thank you so much. And the final D. OK, and for the final D, uh, devolve, innovations, if we've done AI, DE, well, uh, innovations may spread across all kinds of networks, um, personal, professional, peer networks, mm -hmm. relationships. Um, and the devolution happens uh, organically. Um, so maybe if we come back to our community health worker example one more time. Um, in Thailand, we have a good example where the community health worker model has been in place since 1978. Um, hmm. And there, uh, in that particular cultural environment, the role of community health worker is highly prestigious and highly valued. Mm -hmm. And so for an individual to assume a role as a community health worker, they often stay in that role for their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And when they um, uh, want to retire or leave that role, often it is handed to a child or to a family member. And so we can see the devolving of that role across generations um, in that environment. And that uh, particular cultural value and norm has been seen as a really you know, critical facilitator to sustainability of that model um, over time. Excellent, thank you so much. Well, we've explored some of the difficulties of implementation and scale up. Um, then we've listened to some of your examples from around the globe and introduced this new model. And I guess I only have one final question for you. And that is, how does this model help someone who is a practitioner or a professional charged with making change, introducing new ways of working? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I really like about the model is that it has these five steps. And it's, we hope it's very straightforward. So it's informed by t um, extensive literature and uh, talk with practitioners and pressure testing with scholars in the area, but at the end of the day, it's five steps that we've, we're hopeful will resonate with people who are in the field who are really saying, I have this innovation, here's my user group, how can I bring these two things together mm -hmm. and implement this change such that it's, it's sustainable and also scalable. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, I might just add that you know, the um, request from the Gates Foundation really was that we create a practical model, not another sort of theoretical, conceptual piece of work that would sit out in one of those two million articles a year that we keep talking about, mm -hmm. um, but rather could be used in the field. And so that was our charge. We were very intentional in being thoughtful about how these components actually might be done in the field. And so um, in addition to the report that we prepared for the foundation and the peer-reviewed articles that we published, we've created a practitioner's guide that we've really worked with practitioners mm -hmm. in the field to develop. And so that's um, a resource available to people who want to understand what does this really mean, assessment? What does that mm -hmm. look like? How might I go about doing that? And so um, we've got that we maybe could make available to viewers if they're interested. Fantastic. Leslie, Christina, thank you so much for your time and expertise today. And thank you for joining us for what we hope is the first of many conversations on implementing and scaling up best practices in healthcare. I'm Zahira McNatt. Until next time.